Okay, it's time to update the best wireless setup for the Quest, because my last video was on the Quest 2. This video is for the Quest 3. What's the difference? Well, the Quest 3 has double the connection speed than the Quest 2 does, so to get it to work optimally, you can actually get a faster Wi-Fi. That's not to say that the old setup won't work fine for you, but this is about creating the best setup for the Quest 3. Before you do anything, I suggest setting up AirLink on your current network just to get a baseline of how it will perform like in the default setting. That way you have something to compare it to with the methods I'm going to go through here. And I'm not going to go through actually setting up AirLink. That's a different video. So if you if you don't know how to do that, watch Nathie's video. He's go He has like a very in-depth details on how you can set it up on the Quest 3. And he also has a, like a little section for troubleshooting. So go watch his video first, set up AirLink, and when you've got it running, you can come back here. Don't worry, I'll wait. If your regular Wi-Fi is not running optimal, meaning that you'll constantly run into performance tips in frames per second, lag response in inputs, or even small frame drops every 5 to 10 seconds, there's probably a good chance that we can improve your wireless signal. To check your connection, open the Wi-Fi settings on your device and check the connection speeds. If your router is a 5G router at 80Hz, it should remain stable at 1200 megabits per second. For 6G or 5G at 160 Hz, it should remain stable at 2401 megabits per second. If the connections are not running at full speed or it's dropping down in intervals, it means that your connection to your wireless router is not optimal. So let's attempt to create a perfect setup for your wireless connection between your Quest 3 headset and your PC. Our goal is to eliminate all stutters, hiccups, and dramatic image compressions by achieving the most stable wireless signal possible. To do this, we need to create a dedicated Wi-Fi network for your headset, and there are several ways to go about doing this. If you have a tri-band router, you can actually use the 6G network as a dedicated network to your Quest, but we all know that won't last long because more and more devices are actually starting to utilize the 6G connectivity. So a better solution would be to create something that's called an access point. Now an access point is essentially its own point of entry into your wired network, offering a direct and more stable connection. Most routers have the option to run as an AP, but check the box or the specs online to check if your device actually supports this feature. Even if you have like an old router laying around, you might want to try and set that up as an access point, because that would save you a lot of money, really, and it might be more than adequate to your needs. But we're not aiming at adequate in this video. We're gonna try and create the best. Uh, of course, without spending $500 on a high-end gaming router, which will work, by the way, if you wanna go that route. But still, for this example, I'm gonna to try to set up this little guy, which is the TP-Link AXE75. This is probably one of the best budget routers you'll find in the Wi-Fi 6 E-Class. And that's actually what you're gonna need if you wanna utilize the full power of the Quest 3's Wi-Fi. Now the first thing to do is to get your PC wired to your router. Now that might already be a deal breaker for a lot of you because your router might not be situated next to your PC and that's why you're trying to create this setup. You can try using a Wi-Fi signal that could work if you get a good stable signal but most of these wireless services actually suggest that you cable your PC and there are ways you can go about to getting this done. Like you can of course pull a cable through your entire house to the router uh, using uh, boxes and cables. If, it's a bit of work, but it will actually make your connection on your PC a lot better. You can also use one of these power extenders. I don't recommend it because they sometimes can reduce the signal strength uh, quite significantly, but uh, you can try it. Maybe that will work well for you. But the point is that getting your PC cabled is the first priority. And when you're connecting your PC, make sure you're using a CAT5e or a CAT6 cable for optimal performance. Check your cable, it's usually labeled along its length. Next, make sure that your PC's network adapter is utilizing the full speed of your network. I bet you your PC is running at about 100 megabytes per second, when your router is normally capable of running up to 1 gigabyte per second. If you have one of those fancy gaming routers, you can even run up to 2.5 gigabyte per second, but make sure that you have a router that, actually, that is actually capable of that. Go to your settings and find the network and internet settings, and then find the change adapter options. That should open up this with all your network connections. Find the ethernet, right click and click on properties. 
From here, just click configure from clients to Microsoft network, find the advanced tab, and then find the speed and duplex. Now, if the auto negotiation doesn't work and it gives you 100 megabit per second, you can actually set this to the speed of your router. For my sake, I actually have a fancy gaming router, so I'm gonna use that. If you go back to your network settings, you can click on properties on your ethernet cable again, and just check to see if it's running at full speed, which it is. Next, we need to connect the access point to the network using also a CAT6E cable. I know there's a lot of cables for a wireless setup, but it's actually just the connection between your headset and the access point, which will remain wireless. Now you connect this to your access points van port, or if you're using one of these extenders, you probably just have one port, and that usually works both as a van and a LAN port, depending on how you set up your device. If this is an already utilized rear router like this is, you might also need to actually reboot it or reset it by using the reset pinhole that you can find in the back here. Usually you just look at the LED indicators to look for an indication that it's resetting. For the case of TP-Link, you actually have to hold it in about 12 seconds and then wait for the power light to actually turn off. Then it will start resetting. Now it's blinking the power light and it's resetting its settings. If you're using an older router, you might need to find that router's gateway address to set it up using a web client. Now to set it up, we first need to connect to this router's new Wi-Fi. And normally you will find that on the instruction manual on the box or in TP Link's case, it's actually written on the bottom of the actual unit. And it also has a fancy little QR code that you can scan to actually connect to that network. So once you're connected to that router's own little Wi-Fi, we're going to go into the setup. Once you go into the setup, it will immediately find that router and uh, help you set it up. It's gonna go through this little uh, setup wizards and they made this to make it convenient, but it's actually quite annoying because we can't just skip this part. We need to set it up first as a regular router before we can set it up as an access point. So just we're just gonna skim through this and do this really quickly because this is, well, frankly, not the important part. <laughs> So once we got it up and running, we're going to connect to this Wi-Fi now, and we're going to go into the Feather app, where we should find that one local device, which is our Archer. Let's connect to that. And then we're going to go more, and then we're going to find the option that is called Operations Mode. And here it's set as a wireless router, but we're going to set it up as an access point, which is the option down here. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to continue anyway, and then I'm going to save. Switching operation mode will reboot your network, so reboot the network. Once your router has rebooted, uh, you can connect to your main network, and you will see your main router, and it will also have a local device, which is the Archer 75 that we just set up. So let's go into that now. So now that this is set up as an access point, we can actually put the screen back up here. So. Let's create your Wi-Fi network. And this is where things get interesting because this is now we're, not, now we're actually going to create the network for our VR setup. Now we want to use this as a dedicated network only for VR. So let's give it a name that actually reflects that. Now we're gonna call it Underhill, which is my last name. I'm gonna call it VR Link, just so that my neighbors will identify it and see who it belongs to. Give it a password that's easy to to type with using your Quest. The other 5G network, I'm gonna give the same name, but I'm gonna call it 5G. Do the same for the 6G, but of course rename it 6G in the end. And now we're back into our Archer 75 uh, settings here. And you can see it has zero clients because it's only supposed to connect to the actual Quest. And you see that you have a bit uh, less options here when it comes to what you can actually do because it's not gonna like the distributed internet that's gonna happen from the main router instead. So now if we go back into Wi-Fi settings, we can double check again. Now we have the 2G, the 5G, and the 6G setup running. 
uh, in three different uh, networks. We don't need three different networks, so we're actually going to change this. First of all, I'm going to go into the 2G and 5G networks here, and we're actually going to disable the 2G network. Uh, and remember to save. That will just turn off the 2 gigahertz network. We don't need that. Actually, it's just going to create more interference. I can actually keep the 5 gigahertz network because I know a lot of you guys still have problems connecting to the 6G and this will help you troubleshoot uh, where you can actually use this network instead. Just go into the advanced options here and do the channel width and just make sure that it's running at full speed so you actually get that nice 2401 megabits per second. I'm just going to save this. Okay. So now we can see that the 2 gigahertz is turned off with Smart Connect is turned off. And we have our 6G here. Let's take a look at that. These are the settings that I have right now. And take a look at the channel width where you make sure that it's running 160 hertz. And uh, it uses uh, PSC, preferred scanning channel. Uh, and the channel is set to auto, uh, which is fine. So now we're on the quest and we're going to try and connect it to the network that we just created. So we got the 5G and we got the 6G here. So let's uh, connect to this one. So just connect to your new uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, network that we just created using the uh, access point. If you go into your Wi-Fi settings then and just check your connection speed, it should remain stable at 2401 megabits per second. If you're using an older 5G router with 80 hertz, it should remain stable at 1200 megabits per second. So apparently Meta won't let me show you how well it works, but um, trust me, it works very well. So place your access point close to your play space. And as long as you're in line of sight of this access point, you should have a pretty stable signal your entire session. If you have any other tips on how to achieve a smooth wireless experience, leave them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, and I'll Talk to you next time.